But let me welcome to the show. Of course, Drew McCaskill is here. She is the director of a documentary called Coded Bias. Coded Bias is a groundbreaking documentary on bias and artificial intelligence and the women, uh, the women data scientists fighting to expose this threat to civil rights and democracy. Let me welcome director Shalina Kantaya. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, okay. Did, Kantaya? Shalini. Shalini, yeah. Shalini. Just call me oh, so I got the first name wrong. I said Shalini. <laughs> Shalini, because that's, you know, Shalini. Shalini Kataya. Okay. Is that, what does uh, Shalini mean? It means sweetness and concentration, which you wouldn't have known if you watched my film. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Is that Hindi? Uh, Sanskrit is the origin. Okay, okay. I appreciate you, uh, you know, t sharing that. All right. So before we get into coded bias, what is your background as a scientist? Oh, I'm not a scientist at all. I'm an artist, You're a filmmaker, and I make films about tech. And um, a lot of my films have to do about how disruptive technology impacts issues of equality whether it makes the world more fair, whether it gives more or less opportunities and to whom. And so my last film was about um, solar energy and whether it can make the world uh, more fair for working people. And with this film, I sort of saw a TED talk by uh, the MIT scientist featured in the film, um, the brilliant Joy Bolamwini, who um, authors this, who, who, who in the opening scene sort of has this discovery where she's just trying to make something like a Snapchat filter work on her face. You know, she's just trying to super impose it um, as part of like an art project. And the camera doesn't see her dark face. And then she wears like a pure white mask and the computer recognizes that mask that's pure white that is like no one's face um, as a face but doesn't recognize her human um, dark skin face as a human face and so um, that sort of sends her on this journey and I think um, what unfolds in front of me is that joy doesn't stop with that realization of oh you know like some of us who have had like you know the, the water fountain, not read our hands, you know, our dark hands, right? But um, begins to make the connections between, um, you know, racially biased, invasive surveillance technology like facial recognition and the potential harm and harm it's already um, perpetrating on communities of color. Um, with whom it's it's the most biased on. And mm. so in Coded Bias, I seek to draw those connections as a filmmaker. Um, first, to help people understand that these technologies that we've, you know, we've outsourced so much of our decision-making to machines. And a lot of times these machines haven't been vetted for racial and gender bias. They've been vetted that they, they won't discriminate or do harm to, to communities that have already been harmed because they're replicating data from the past. And um, what I began to see in the making of this film was that this could be um, the, the place where civil, the battle for civil rights gets fought in the 21st century, that this is where um, civil rights um, struggles will happen in, in now mm -hmm. and in the future which is uh, scary, Shalini. Um, I, I think what I was asking, and, and I, I asked, asked it poorly, you know, as journalists, as you're a filmmaker, we're content creators, you know, you usually lean towards something that you're interested in. So my assumption that you're into science or into tech, um, you know, it comes from, this is the kind of stuff you do. So with, with your solar energy um, documentary, did you find that, uh, it can save us. Like, what was what was the finding? If that was the pursuit, oh, what, did, what yeah. was the conclusion? I think with all tech, it's 
partly the tech and partly how it's implemented. And that's what I found with solar energy. I was like, oh, if, if people pass policy that make it so when you put solar in your house that working people get a kickback on their energy bills, someone from the community gets a job putting solar on your roof, and the world gets cooler and the neighborhood gets, um, gets cleaner, the air gets better to breathe and our, there's less asthma, then that's a win-win all around. That's, that's a, a disruptive technology that is relatively low budget that could disrupt, the game change the whole system and put power back into the hands of the people. And I think with AI, um, I think what is talked about in the film is that, you know, all the power is on one side. So unlike I was finding with solar, it could be power, it could decentralize power, put power in the hands of people. And with AI, what you have is, all of these big companies automating their decision making and having all of the power of these technologies that will shape the future in the hands of a very few people who don't look like you me or drew um and 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 just a, a finer point uh to get to why are you interested in this as your area to to cover what what did something happen in your life where you were like ah I need to be a social justice warrior and make film about um, this. Oh, that's beautiful. I, uh, I actually was in a sea of monks in India and it was a Tibetan village and it was one of the um, 13 villages that India gave to Tibet. And I was aware of that it was a community um, recreating itself in exile. And I became aware that there were stories you couldn't express in words. And so I became aware that the visual image and the power to move somebody's heart with the visual image. Um, and, that's, and that's what I think the power of cinema is, is that it really moves people's hearts. So you may not care about bias and AI, but you care about Joy, who's this person who goes on a journey to make social change. And I think by empathy, by, by identifying with someone and identifying with people radically different than us that we can actually, that that's the actual spark that makes social change. Feeling, and that's what films do. They make us feel. Drew McCaskill knows numbers. He, uh, that's, his, that's his business. You know, we talk quite frequently, especially on Tech Tuesday, about, you know, uh, our power in these spaces with our over-indexing in these things, you know. So I just wanted to introduce you to him, Drew McCaskill. Hey, I, I, my question, I know we spend so much time in talking about bias and AI, about talking about the algorithms and talking about the data sets. And I think that those are really important. But what, what scares me about AI and communities of color and, and Urban View is Black folks, I'm Black, I'm concerned about what uh, AI can do for, uh, to and or for Black folks is that the attitude of scientists and who makes the decisions about what we use AI to, to do, right? Like, what are the initiatives that we apply artificial intelligence to? Is there any cultural competency or, or humanity or feelings about, you know, concern for communities around what we are using this incredibly powerful tool to uncover or discover or do? In the course of your, your work, what was the what was your takeaway around the decision makers on the science side about mm -hmm. what their level of sort of emotional intelligence is around applying AI? I love this question um, because I think you know surprisingly tech companies have come to the table and wanted to screen this film. Um, including Google and Facebook and IBM and all the major companies have wanted to screen coded bias, which I think is extraordinary. And I think shows that um, there are a lot of well-intentioned people who work at these companies who want to make change. I think often where I disagree with them <laughs> is that I think that inside tech, there's this urge to say we just need to make a, per a perfect algorithm that is just about the dirty data 
that that the data is imperfect and therefore um, we just need to clean up the data and we can have a great outcome. And that is not my belief at all. Um, to me, it is fundamentally a question of power and about that big tech has too much power and AI runs off of data and there are essentially nine companies that have access to that data that's pointed out by Amy Webb's work, uh, Webb's work in the US and China. And both of those countries, you've seen how China has begun to weaponize their AI against their own citizens. Mm. And here in the States, whether that's by corporations like Facebook or Google, who we've begun to trust as our benevolent, oh, it's okay because it's in their hands and we trust them. Um, but it, even if we do trust them, they're, they're outside players in ways that this could be maliciously used. And, and, and so citizen people uh, in a democracy need protection. And um, it's my belief that what I believe in is that knowledge is power. And what I hope is that people will watch Coded Bias and go to our Take an Action website, codedbias.com, take action. Um, there's the Algorithmic Justice League, ACLU, Color Change, lots of organizations that are making the connection between invasive surveillance technologies and protecting the inherent value of black life and how those two, um, how one can be a danger to the other. Yeah. And so I think, yeah, that's the main thing is that to me, sometimes it's about not using the tech. Sometimes yes. it's about even putting the tech down. And I think the moment that we're living through with COVID, with these, um, with the largest movement for civil rights and equality that we've seen in 50 years, that, that we have to lead from a deeper place in our humanity mm -hmm. and that we all should have a place at the table in talking about how these technologies get used, especially when they get used on communities of color and vulnerable communities.